This is the call of order. This is the term. Today is uh, April 5th, 2023. It is 4.01 p.m. We're here at Sunday in the French Street. Wednesday, April 5th, 2023, at 4.04. And then it's going to be Wednesday, May 3rd, 2023, at 4 p.m. 111 on French Street, second floor, room 204. Go ahead and we'll swear to the staff. Please raise your hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name to the Thank you very much. Commissioners who are present on the left, Jeff Ferriel. On the left, Jeff Ferriel. On the left, Jeff then we're down to the your No item for the form. Moving down to the approval of staff approvals. Staff approvals begin on ten of your agenda. Commissioners to review that list. I think I'm good. Yeah. You're done. You're chairman. Second. Second. All the same. Yes. I said the motion passes. And then moving on to the approval for minutes from the last meeting, March 1st, 2023. Mr. Chair, I move approve. Second. Any questions on the motion? Yeah, right, moving on to the applications for certificates of appropriateness. Item one, uh, GB-23-04-009-0097658-0. Come up and take a seat. Once you step up, you settle. You can raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Rachel Harkle Road with MKSK. Uh, this project is for landscaping and taking the front and rear yard in the front yard to install paper and blenders along Cedar Burger Alley. And the decorative portion and downspout spillways are included on the northwest and southwest corner of the structure. We'll place the fence outside the existing fence, we'll be painted a dark gray black color, charcoals. The finished pan trunk six two pan trunk L U that should be six feet. In the rear yard to construct a new pad patio with the unilog not papers and similar sand setting them. On aggregate base, papers should be belled and brick well crest five sixty. Continuous. Install a stone paper walkway along the east facade of the new garage that will be accessed by a self-closing lock gate. 
new plant, new planting dispersing the materials, install low voltage LED light panels to illuminate the backyard but will not light the neighboring properties, install a self-contained water feature, install small LED well wash light at the water feature, which will include which will Install LED lighting to uplight and install a very large shade tree. These lights will also shade. Okay. Thank you. papers. The applicant was asked how they will prevent the staining. So they asked the 410, we can't revise their design to use a powder coated aluminum for the planting border. Rather than the port, rather than the port ten, but the near the material for the paper patio that changed to be a handover press paper and three colors were indicated as peach. Uh, staff recommends approval with any all clarification to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuing the certificate with the following conditions, and that water is not be placed in the front elevation along Cedar and Burger Alley. Uh, the basis for staff recommendation is um, three one one six. Three standards improvements A, the German Village Guidelines Exterior Considerations Fences and Walls, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The German Village Guidelines Exterior Considerations for Site Lighting, Street Furniture, Pools, Fountains, and Gazebos, 1 and 3. Anything else to add? No, I just wanted to clarify that uh, the paver change was due to availability um, once we started to talk to the contractors. So that's the only. So that's the only change. Aesthetic, I guess, to the owner. So we would like to dress that up a little bit, and we can't take the siding lower elevation from what I'm told by the architect. So you're asking lower elevation in front of the planting bed, correct? The, the plant bed is the. I'm sorry, I'm not sure. So you've got. And between it and the wall is our plant bed. It's going to be a raised plant bed. Yep. Uh, with simple grasses along the front edge there. With simple grasses. Still seems a lot. Part of our impetus to the plant is along both Cedar Alley and Burger Alley was to, you know, did people pulling over too close to the house uh, during this so people pass by in the alley because uh, it is a tight corner there. The idea of just to cut that comes from so, uh, below the siding is the reason to make it height that it is. I just don't think that's an appropriate solution. Guessing that foundation is probably stone or something. It's so. stacked stone and it's part parched on top. Yeah, and the concrete parging uh, to repair it would be really extensive. It would get into repairing the wall below the foundation, the fountain from what I understand. But again, I have to defer the architect on that. I'm not really. But I'm not that really also. Yeah. Set pattern conditional for the next couple of slides. I don't see that I'm going to wash the light. I don't know. Can you 
bonds indicated by L. Um, I'm a little bit of that the plans call. Um, I'm sorry, but yeah, um, well, it's driven into the ground. It's going to be ready to get the concrete on this triangle. Yeah. Add detail to that. Um, feet, obviously, to keep up the tension and strength of that edge. There are gauge. I don't know if it does do that, but I never have one. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I question the durability of it, I question the appropriateness of it. Yeah, we were going to work with Fortin on it for them to just run us on that um, so I can talk to them and get those answers of what they recommend on the gauge by drawings on the argument. Any concerns from the other commissioners about that detail? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I, I have water concerns, but that's not for us. Yeah, it's, it's, not, really. <laughs> it's not draining. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, and and what's the phrase is mean? It's all going to push forward. Doesn't have a bottom. It's just the ring of the planter. So my water concerns are for the homeowner. With the three saw, mm -hmm. got a hole. Yeah. So we had a anti box, a series of anti boxes across the face. We looking at the um, it would it would be a rhythm, it would be a pattern, it would be a visual interest. I don't think this has any way of being dirt up against the bank. Don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's gonna last long. Um, I think it's a cop out of, of architectural structural issue in the foundation. So it was just 
Oh, they, yeah, if it was down to grade level, at tribal level, yeah. Okay. That's a no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The traditional method of landscaping is to hide the yard, take some stakes. Yeah, grow vine. <laughs> well, I think that <laughs> owner would be amenable to either lowering that or going to a, a more uh, furniture type planter that we would set on surface and then the brick would just go up to the building as it exists now. That would, that would be much yeah. I think we could suggest either one of those and they'd be amenable to one. Okay, I suggest you take this out of the application okay. and come back with that solution. Okay. And it could even be September. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I think that's what we're kind of going for. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. We can make that in a minute. Are there any comments or concerns with anything else in the application? That they're going to amend it by taking out the the edging twenty four inch high edging treatment and associated landscaping on the west side. Well, it's on two sides, right? It's on, cedar. It's on burger and cedar. Okay. Well, if they even more, if they take it out, be in the back of everything. If they could want to go on the box or they, they would have to come back with that. Yeah. So what I'm saying, if we split it, that puts it separate. They have the application argument agenda. No, I think we've got to go through the events right. again. Good point. Do you have a preference? Okay. I'd like to make a decision and be done. <laughs> so, so if we split it, mm -hmm. that keeps you on the agenda for next month, and you could, and you don't have to go through another application and mm -hmm. the process. If we amend it and just take it out, mm -hmm. you have to resubmit. Oh, okay. Resubmit. okay. Yeah, let's not do that. Then we need to try to make it as yeah. efficient as possible. Yeah, I think that'd be great. So we need to I'll motion to uh, split item one GD two three dash zero four dash zero zero nine. Uh, into uh, removing the planter box as an application on Cedar Alley and Burger Alley as item B and the remainder of the application. Makes sense. So, mm -hmm. second. So, the planter box is B or the planter box is A? Planter box is B. Okay. So, Thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me. Thank you. to get that in and the other side is beyond the next. Uh, that would be uh, a week from tomorrow. So, got it. Thank you. Yeah. I'm forward to the only two, three dash zero two dash zero one three dash zero twenty five. Applicant for one twenty five. Call for a 120 ride. Good to go. Settle. Please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. <laughs> your name for the record, man? Um, Taylor Hube, the German studio. Mark Schieber, landscape market bank with Mark Schieber Associates out of Guyana. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the book. Oh, what? 
Civil engineers report with mathematical calculations showing that water would not run into neighboring properties. The size of the planting bug would collect water perfectly, and generally showing what would happen to the water if yard. The engineer the engineer's report reflected that drilling holes would be necessary. Commission suggested applicant work with the engineer to determine how many holes, what size it would be, and our location. The applicant submitted new materials to be placed on the April agenda. These materials included additional photos of the April agenda survey report from the owner associates. The report concluded that ADR and associates did not believe there would be a negative impact on the neighboring properties from the concrete installation. At the April business meeting, the commission requested the applicant clarify the impact of the neighboring properties and how the engineer defines the negative impact. Commissioners advised the applicant they should come to the hearing prepared to answer additional questions. Information letter is on his way, so we meet him since I have not been here before. But I filled it. So, any questions? There's over top of the concrete still. Yes. <laughs> so, remember the discussion we had required on this with the So that that reference in the guideline that that will so that that also in reverse to also are not cited to should lay in the bed of sand. Sometimes a concrete basis is installed beneath the sand bed. The last application of that had come up. Um, it was argued that because it says sometimes a concrete base is installed beneath the sand. The last hearing, my memory serves, um, the, the concern from the commission, the real concern was water off. Mm -hmm. And put it property. And we had asked for an engineer, a study to be done, a special study to be done about that concern, um, which we have the report. Report in the application, start on page four. We'll know that it's all urgent because there's such differences. There was one that's page four. I read it, states that you don't see an issue with that. And then we have that. I do have a question for that. I consider this after the business meeting. Is one of the neighbors the purview of this commission? It's a question I have for us to think through because that is something. There are guidelines. There are other. This would be those types of things, those thresholds. This would be well. Since we have a report, the information we might want to consider that. Are we going to consider that? It's 
interpret the philosophy. It's a benefit to the applicant on the surface, which are determined the water run up to the table for design is broken and not coming back. It's designed to be designed in the world. Stop it. Cedar called kind of over there that reference well before, but simply remember the word. It's in the right mode. That is, you should be. That's what I'm trying to do on program business practice. <laughs> so make sure that to the swamps, but not to your neighbor bits. So, not make any Sorry, thank you for that. Mission that is now just the concrete, or is it the condition that you're proposing that favors the concrete? Or is it, or does it not mean? Uh, sorry, I, could you repeat that? Sure, I was just the engineers. Is the proposed So I guess. You're saying you haven't changed the drainage. It's as good or as bad as it was before. It's going to what? You haven't changed the drainage. It's as good or as bad as it was before. Exactly. Well, it's going to be put away because there's a planting bed that intercepts part of the drainage. So intercepts part of the drainage. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been some discussion, and there is a drain line that comes from the neighboring town that probably drains on there to resolve that issue. So, but the amount of water that was there before will be less because of that. The planters are going to be absorbing that water. So explain the drain line. That, um, explain the line. That so if you look, it's certainly good for the place. Uh, there's a red, the red house to the pictures of the east of the property to the west of the Go down another one if you would. No, the other way. Keep going because I saw it. Page 17. There it is. Okay. So there it is. So that's been draining, draining on the property as there. So that water will be still working and falling into the planting bed that will now better, better absorb it with the plants that are also in there. And get it to flow more readily to the alley and be taken care of. Yes. Any questions or comments on the application? There are none. There's been a motion. To approve our board to do this. Our board to do it. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Yes. Present. Or, or, uh, present. Motion passes. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Gentlemen, members of the board, thank you. And
Clarification: Did the information about the lighting not get uh, included in what I sent? I thought I included it. Um, from the packet we downloaded from the Google Drive, there wasn't the light. Yeah, I forgot to update that. My apologies. <laughs> uh, any questions, comments from the commission? Try to. Perhaps guide, guide this. Um, so, looking at what's been presented, Pergola was existing. It's just been repaired in kind. Um, the landscaping in the rear, it's all fenced in. Basically, so they were taken out, the flags were taken out, the cave was put in, uh, with a few changes to the landscape design. Um, from the commission standpoint, are there any, any heartaches or problems with? The landscaping being done inside the fenced in rear. I don't believe so for me. Okay. Um, from the tackle the, the, the alley side, the garage, um, applications identifying existing busted concrete apron being replaced with pavers similar to what's been installed in the backyard, correct? Yes. The mission standpoint. Any issues with those papers being used on the alley side for the completed reason? Concrete papers, correct? correct? That's correct. Which we don't allow. No. The the papers should have also been specified in the package. So, in one of the supplements that I provided. Gen generally speaking, um, the commission doesn't approve. Uh, concrete papers, typically it's brick, um, existing concrete, or half foot replacing it in kind would be like like for light condition. Um, I think that is one of the, one of the pieces of commission speaker, but here, but would have a struggle with putting those concrete papers that would not allow in public spaces in that location. Um,
And then I think the other piece is from the front side of the property, those pavers being on the public side of that fence, being on the front, brick was there, brick was removed, the pavers put in. Typically, we'd approve those pavers. I think I was looking at the brick that got ripped out and replaced by concrete papers and the other brick is straight. There the, then there's the radon mitigation system. Um, it was a thing the plan to paint to hide the light. I think that's an easy solution. I agree. Are there any major, any other major contention commission? Signs? Other question is there, there's the fence that seems to have the. Right. Is uh, that I a can, new fence or is that? Yeah, so the. Uh, my neighbor, two of us, which you're seeing the fence there, is the fence and then one um, in the, in the south uh, east. By the garage. Sorry, swept by the garage, replaced it with the top. Yeah. I had nothing to do with that. Okay, so that wasn't true. No. That's the case you have to talk about. That's the case you have to talk about. So, we'll just talk about this. This question is, is there anybody in favor of the brick or the paper? for the papers in front of the garage. I write that out. Sounds like the commission is on board with everything else in the application. Get everything set the fence. Yeah. We could we could vote and could approve that and give 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 him his way on that part and he can do it. And then we can address my the only way is we usually do this construction for something. This is all in place already. It doesn't change anything that's further and true. <laughs> that you that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have absolutely no problem with putting things in cart so people will go ahead with a part of it and come back to protect the rest of it. It doesn't mean come back to this forever. Okay. There's no, no negative impact. Um, thank you. Uh, still had to put brick papers back in the front uh, unless there's some other option you want to present? No. Um, it's kind of we don't like to see asphalt go in. It's broken.
We've allowed concrete on new construction and stuff. Is there a requirement for the kind of brick? So the options that are removal, admission, concrete, or brick paper. A wall? Yeah. Brick paper. Brick paper. For the flagstones. For the flagstones. The flagstones have been removed. Um, so concrete pavers are out of the concrete pad. Uh, apron is done. Just to be clear. Okay. The Okay. Understood. My my vision wanted to pull that gate forward to to, to reduce the amount. Yes, perfect. Um, it would involve, of, I guess, another fence, right? More fence. More fence. Is that something that they're? Go back to the base of the house. Have to put the gate. This is for the garden garage side. Oh, garage side. Right side. Sorry. I, I don't think <laughs> you bring that gate straight back off the base of the garage. No fabric line. That would be fine. They want to add. Just sitting in a little bit of papers that are not fried, but had to get replaced. Minimize the rework of the papers. On the front side, get the other out. At the 44 on the side of the houses, we asked that the, that the gate be set back behind the first window. Okay. But that would eliminate some of that work, but we had to do by being tried. Okay. Um, so that's an option I think I'd like to explore. So I guess that means we should continue. So that means we should continue. Yeah. A couple options for you, trying to minimize the reason. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. 
Okay. Motion to continue item GD 23 03 022. Second. What's the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Yes. I stand up on the test. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Does the community need to get make sense for you? Yes. I guess you have to report it. It'll depend on what you want. All right, let's do it. Item six was withdrawn. Moving to item seven, GV 2304 012 7139 South 3rd Street. Please raise your right hand. 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 The winter vegetable will be temporary and to be 15 inches wide by 60 inches in depth. The vegetable will be ordered to be able to be more elevation. Staff analysis of this. These are the applicant expectancy parameters of their current vegetable, which have been approved for the past two years, and the materials the same as previously approved will fire, as a fireproof flag. Uh, staff recommends approval of any all clarifications we sent to the applicant. Staff for review of our information on the vegetable with the applicant. The basis for staff recommendation is that the proposed work is generally consistent with uh, 31613 standards for site improvements A. And your guidelines, entryways, and coaching closures, such as the system, two, five, and six. Anything else to add? No, sir. Any questions? We've never asked this before. We've never asked this before, even though we've had this from you guys before. How is this attached to the pilasters? That's How is this attached to the pilasters? It's on the wood. Okay, and thank you. That's GB one two seven three nine South Road Street. Favor. Aye. Yes. I said that motion passes. Thank you very much. See you next year. We have another one right now. Next item is item number eight. GB dash two three dash zero four dash zero one three seven three nine South Road. Show the uh, this is for landscaping uh, for a patio to install a temporary patio. The patio space to be 90 feet by 30 feet. The patio installed April 1st through October 1st, 2023. To, and, uh, this involves the removal of the temporary vestibule that was approved as GB 22 10 021. Uh, temporary red iron fence to be a schoolhouse style. Uh, temporary rocks and height anchored into brick pavers. The brick pavers are to be replaced like for like in the exact same shape and color. Uh, matching the adjacent existing sidewalk upon removal of the patio and, and the fencing. Um, any new base under the brick is permeable. Uh, no awnings or umbrellas to be installed. Um, the app staff analysis the applicant has been approved to install the same patio into P21 as GB21 04. When they remove the patio, they replace those bricks with the extras as I referred to. Uh, staff recommendation is that staff recommends approval with any and all clarification to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to entrance of certificate. The basis of the staff record is that it's generally consistent with, C, uh, with 311 standards for A. And staff would also like to ask if, uh, how if, uh, the commission could give comments on. Um, this could be a future staff approval if it's the same every year. Anything else to add? I appreciate that. <laughs>
As much of a play of a pleasure it is to see the applicant every the applicant every probably probably something. I think it's still a responsibility for improvement, but it needs to be by attendance. I think I say staff can bring up something. I think it's the same to make it through. Application is saying same thing. It's a renewal. Yes. So you can have a conversation. You can still need that. I think it just to be safe. And we would just wait. That's like it. That's just trying to look at the worst case scenario. Applications like that. Well, well, the staff asked us to do it. Other instances where you said, no, you have to do it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, item 234-014-715 Mohawk Street. Once you're all settled. Bring another chair up. Thank you. You understand. We're not authors. So, I'll raise your right hands. I'll raise your right hands. Your name, director? Glenn Evans, homeowner. You. With Urban Motor Architect. You. AFCO is. The proposed work description is an exterior building alteration to replace the old windows inside. To replace two deteriorated French doors in the rear addition of the new marble marble type modern French door size to match existing. To add two marble living public casing from the new windows to the north elevation of existing door. To replace the deteriorated door siding with a new smooth cement board siding to match existing door profile.
closing the scenes, I just continue to the book doesn't sound a little bit more than four. Um, and the new windows, and then top. And then top was built on this in so we just want to add some noise to the north elevation. Um, so we just want to um, have existing siding is, is deteriorated. So we would like to put it as deep like it. Um, and even on the 94 edition, the French doors on the west elevation, um, the frames. And stop, you know, we're building some of the some other shows. And some of them have been painted shut, and some of them have been painted sort of open. Rails don't need, so it's, you know, the lock. Um, they have storm windows that are in really, really bad shape. Um, so, um, so, I'll let you know, the shape. Mark and Glenn talk also about this, but um, we have saved many, many windows in historic structures. Um, and in this case, we would be much better off replacing windows. No. Into the life of my granddaughter who spent time in her house. And we had an incident. This I think Tom basically said, lock herself in the bedroom. Basically said, and she panicked and realized that this was a fire. So, she is, she said the thing happened on Sunday. Our four year old ran up to the front window, and that's what she did. She saw someone walk in the car, the first thing she did is take both hands and his glass. Have a good one, Fable. They're not safe if you're brave. 
you're going to get cut with that. But the specs we can pay on, you know, we can make it so much better. We're going to spend more on the, we're going to spend more on the renovations. Safety is really important, the aesthetics, but also when you the front window, you have to use the world. Things are changing. Energy, climate footprint, and as much as you try to install the windows, you're not going to make them as energy, as energy efficient as the windows that were. So, the whole thing safety is I think it was a, you know, expert at restoring windows, look at them, see whether they could be repaired to work. Yes, um, just a couple comments with regards to that. Um, I think the, the first point is the Evans app. They did the three jump three of product. Um, that's number one. Number two, I think that one of the things that I would like to do today is give the commission some sense of uh, the lack of tradespeople that are available to do this type of work. Um, it is a serious <laughs> situation. I've been in the business for 30 years. Uh, we've, we've put a lot of uh, windows in the village and I think that it's important for the commission to realize that um, the expertise to do the right work on these windows is very, very difficult to find. And uh, perhaps you have a list of approved people that do that. I suspect not. But um, I, I, and, and you know we're, what we're talking about is is providing a product that is approved by the commission. So I think that if I were to summarize, it's the wishes of the architect and the owner to bring everything in the whole up the same spec level. And frankly, um, all three and were they better? Yes. It's more satisfactory that you went to open them, you could open them now, you pound on them, you pry on them. Um, so I do have experience in the past doing it and spending more, like I said, more money to have to release them. So I'm, I'm very concerned that happened when it passed, so I did the uh, Evans 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 to look at these situations all the time. And we probably could save the commission a lot of time if we had a better sense of what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Because there have been a number of homes where the commission has moved where the original windows were candidates for replacement. So I think that would also be helpful moving forward as well. So is there anything about the situation with the windows in this house that couldn't be said about almost all of the windows? Is there windows in your building? There's a failure of deterioration of rot. Uh, and, and, you know, what level, I guess, is an acceptable level to replace? I would like to add, I'm trying to. Both houses that were built at the same time as ours, one to the left, one to the right, have new windows. No, commissions change and, and criteria change. And, and I appreciate what you're doing. I know it's a very tough little shop. But I look to the left, I the right, or I look across the street, like down the street. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty, when we bought a house, we, we probably knew the criteria because we had no help us. We did a lot of research before with the house and felt pretty confident based on what we know and what we've seen that these were in pretty bad shape. So that, I think that's what he's asking. It's, it's I can read the, 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 the line in the, that says, the line in the, that says replace, replace, or cost, basically. So, but that's, 
how it's always been. And we've been there in eight years, so we've seen it at different levels. Sometimes it must seem like there's punishment for having a house where the windows have been better maintained. Well, they're not, they have, this house is in, if you can see the house, this house, the house has been maintained. Bathroom's not working. We bought it as is, but this house has not been maintained. Right now we just went by it when the shutters are has blown off. So we are going to get this house up to, to has blown up to what you'll be proud of to see, just like we did the last one. But this house has not been maintained. Up to what in the past, our window assessment criteria has been like 50% of care and that there's evidence of previous repairs and maintenance versus the windows the windows that is actually for 20 years. I, I I believe based on the history that there was a period of time that the previous only been there and she could no longer take care of things. And and for that there's a lot of paint on all of this and on all of this and they're paint enough we can so we can do all kinds of things. Um, so, 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 I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt that. And <clears throat> we, um, in my experience, in different houses in German village, have fixed windows when there's not everything on every window that needs to be addressed. So I understand you can put gates and all of those things and strip the lead paint and but it's every single one and some lead paint are much worse than others. And then we would still have to put we would still ask to put a new storm window on to replace those storm windows that look pretty early. So with respect to the, 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 you know, uh, the expert, when we face things like this for other things, such as slavers and things like that, we usually ask that there's an expert for them. It's not somebody who is being contracted. Yeah, I understand. Um, and there, we do not have a list, but Columbus Landmarks has a list of window restoration contractors. Um, so I think uh, before we would get to a point where we, place where we would feel comfortable with this, we would love for you to reach out to some of those experts, bring them in, have perhaps have them provide a report that we can review and see, uh, allow them to provide their opinions on whether or not these are reasonable or not. I am set. That's in the same age. That's in my house. I'm sorry, coming and thinking about replacing glass. That glass is. Um, but I think that, that would be helpful for us to have a report from an independent person from that list of us. Or for staff, not a two or just out here, um, six. So, the names that were back. Honestly, I do know that that uh, pays high school. At, Landmarks uh, to try to get straight. It's not saying they're there now, um, but that's cool for me. Um, to the, the issue of, of safety, what you're talking about, I had a dog who broke one of the six so when he was getting excited as well. Um, one thing I found, uh, uh, product on the market, uh, name the name of it, but they're basically the name of their storm windows you put inside um, that are kind of pressure fit to, to the frame. That can be a barrier. It's, it's a polycarbonate uh, lazy product. So it's not going to crack or break. Um, so that is something you can do on the interior treatment. Um, and I try to be sensitive to the applicants. I, I've replaced, I've restored windows myself, but 
not everybody has that different expertise. No, it's bad. Yeah. Uh, but windows are part of our fabric. It's one of the uh, secondary interior. It breaks all the technical manuals, everything. As much as possible, it's definitely it's a high priority in the preservation for this program. Uh, and that's correct. Financially feasible as a different conversation. We don't take financial hardship into account on the first pass. It's a whole separate criteria, a whole separate background of information of what needs to be put together to make that case. Um, I don't think the commission has any issue, as, as staff stated, of the non original windows. I think that's a slam dunk, replace all those. Um, unless there's. I can understand which ones were non original. Yeah, I think that's clarifying which ones are original versus not, but the non original, I think we might have an issue with those. It's just the original ones, the ones that we have a hard time with. I do have a question. Sorry if it's a rookie question. Um, replacing the glass, I know the waviness of the glass is. Is is that an option? Yeah, that's, that's all you want. Yeah, that typically the sash comes out, you strip off the old column, be replace the glass with plain flat glass, plain glass. So what do you mean? It's clear. Yeah. Why is that? As long as it's clear, not yeah. tinted. <laughs> yeah. But can you do you can you replace them? Is there a safety glass or something that you can replace them with? I mean, you could put the tempered glass in there. Yeah. Wanted, yeah. Or lemon. Lemon. Yeah. Say so we're not. Concerned with waving of glass, unless it was glass full enough to have that true. We're not metal. <laughs> A lot of the way that you see in our glass, it just. She's the bag of. Yeah, and I will offer them. I've been on the commission. I don't want them. And a little bit of deja vu because it's the, we can get the same arguments every time. Um, about energy efficiency, and I totally, totally uh, understanding that as well. Uh, as I'm looking at my own, I'm thinking about what are the options for solar because we try to help with those types of things. Uh, we get the same arguments about what <laughs> we want consistency through, and so I, uh, I, I will let you know, at least from my perspective and, and, and the ability to try to be fair, I don't think we're previous application that we have. And then sometimes there are orders that have been replaced that we need to prove. Uh, we don't always get those caught. And so, uh, a, lot of, a lot of places that you're seeing out there are windows got replaced sometime in the past with a product that reached the end of its life uh, or was done without our approval in the first place back in the day. Um, vinyl windows that we are more than happy to get, to get out. <laughs> um, so it's a case by case basis. And, and I can't just say that everything you see is new. We approved replacing with with new windows. A lot of it was it got replaced somewhere along the line. The originals were gone, and now they're replacing non originals with with new. It's a case by case basis. Okay, so moving forward, if we could provide a re, uh, report from somebody who does window restoration. You would take that into consideration. Right. The staff has already said they're repairable. So oh, staff's, staff's, staff's point of view. So I would suggest maybe you have arrangements for some of the commission members to go look at it once. We can do that. Have, having an expert that does woodwind restoration giving their, their opinion, I think would be beneficial. One's good, two's better, but yeah, to be and, <clears throat> and as I said, we've we I have worked on projects where we where we have restored windows. Most of the time, we're more successful when those windows being operable isn't important. Um, and in this case, that is that is much more important than some of my other clients. Um, so we can do that. We, and we can split the application to get yeah. the parts we need for them. So then, Ned, if you, the windows that I think staff is recommending that we can replace, 
are on the one story 1994 edition. That's what I said. And on the what I assume was a side porch where there's three windows with transoms. And then those French doors on the back that are deteriorated. As well as exterior siding repair, uh, replacing the board and batten siding and fixing the deteriorated trim on the garage and the, and the house. That would help us to move forward and So with all that conversation, uh, my recommendation is we separate out the original windows into their own application. That way it stays on the on the agenda moving forward. Everything else we put on a separate application that we can vote on now to get you part of the way there at least. Uh, and then we can deal with, with those original window issue at the next once you are able to get more information. Does that work for you all? Yes. I'm going to do a motion to split then. Motion to split. Uh, motion to split GD-23-04-014, uh, making the replacement of the original Windows, Windows item B and the remainder of the work item A. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I say that motion passes. Motion to approve item GB 23 04 014 A. There's second. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I say that motion passes. Motion to continue item B. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Passes. Thank you. Thank you. So, just for clarification, how long do we have to get you to get staff information on a continued application? You have a week and a uh, week from tomorrow. Okay. Could the staff provide those references uh, with regards to the tradespeople that do those repairs? Um, we can only give you the direction to go to Columbus Landmarks. Okay. We can't provide any list of contractors. Okay. So, just a question. Sure. You guys are aware that some of these windows are pinned? Yes. Okay. I think that I think that there's also different eras of the original windows because some of them have those little dial, those pins and then others don't and there's different I'm, I'm going to guess that the previous residence was an elderly woman somebody pinned up for oh we had my mother's house done that's how I I recognize what I'm looking at yeah okay thank you thank, thank you thank you so much uh, moving ahead to item number 10, GB-23-04-015, 307 East Columbus Street. Applicant for 307 East Columbus Street. That's a call for 307 Columbus Street. Right. That one, uh, item for 11 is E. Deniers. Oh. <laughs> well, got one choice. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, on staff. Did I don't think he's a commissioner. He doesn't need to be. Oh, uh, no, I'm a commissioner now, so I'll swear anyway. Okay. Do you tell me swear to tell the whole truth? No. And all that? Yes, I do. Thank Anthony you. Anthony still has a swear. Um, the proposed work description um, this is a new construction and alteration to an approved addition. This is a modification to application GB 22 02 013. Proposing to combine um, 364 and 366 Jackson into a single residence in lieu of expanding 364 Jackson. The new proposal eliminates the addition on the north side of 364 Jackson and instead extends the second floor extension across the entire rear of the house. The existing second floor bathroom dormers and surrounding shed room to be removed. Walls to be framed out to the extent of the first floor below. 
design essentially the connector piece of the original 364 proposal, but also mirrored onto the 366 side. No additional footprint to be added and reusing the existing door openings into historic brick. No new openings in existing exterior wall proposed. Uh, there are uh, providing three design options. Option C is preferred. Um, option C is to include a new gable, gable dormer on the rear north elevation with new windows from the approved window list and the roof materials from the approved shingle list. A new gabled second story addition on the first floor addition on the north elevation. Materials include a standing seam metal roof, siding to be vexed to steel siding, a smooth, a smooth five inch reveal, and 463 coal. Oh. Trim to be painted 7079 iron ore. So, new windows on the addition to be from the approved window list. Dummy windows in the northeast corner from the addition. To maintain and refinish existing windows in the first floor of the existing addition, the existing doors and light fixtures to remain. Staff analysis. Um, at the April business meeting, the commission discussed and determined this may be better as a conceptual application and also requested the year of the shed roof and that the sandbar maps be included in the materials packet. Staff informed the applicant of the commission's recommendation for the application to be conceptual, um, but also informed the applicant that staff consider their application complete. Applicant chose to remain in the request for action and provide the sandbar maps. Um, if uh, staff recommends that if commission uh, the, that the commission approve any of the three options provided to be used in the test case, because the uh, Petrarch Omnis best of steel siding MEG phenolic paneling or similar <laughs> paneling, the applicant will be using the Petrarch Omnis fresh stone and graphite for panel walls and best of steel siding in iron stone for the horizontal siding. Uh, staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issues of certificate with, condition, with the following conditions. Based off the previous commission, commissioner's conditions for March 2022 hearing to make the Vesta Steel product a test case. For final material selection of the windows and asphalt shingles to be submitted to HBO staff for final review and approval. Uh, basis for staff recommendation is 311611, standards for alteration 9, 10, and 12. And 311612, standards for new construction, A, D, E, F, and I. German Bill of Guidelines for Additions, uh, 2 and 4. Can't see your face in data? Uh, yeah, so um, option C is the option we would like to propose on. Um, we included option A and B just as a as a uh, exhibit showing other roofing types, what that would do, engaging with the primary structure, um, and felt that the option C was the most appropriate of the three. Uh, it's all due to head height. Um, how do we engage back there? Um, so, as the application stated, the idea is to take the footprint of the first floor, just extend it up to the second floor, want to retain that roof edge line uh, of the original shed roof. Um, to, to show the historic nature of what was there originally. Um, the current bathroom dormers on the rear on the second floor, uh, you can flip the photos of the, that condition. Um, it's a rubber flat roof, pretty shoddy, how it's connected. That's been there for longer than I've owned the property, 2010 prior. Um, got problems with, with water drainage. So the idea is to, to put that that uh, pitched roof running north south for the ridge line. Um, try not to engage any more of the principal roof than what we're already engaging, just to mitigate that. We propose putting a dormer up on the the rear facade of the property, uh, really to to help with the engagement of that the, t the peak of that pitch uh, where it connects the principal structure. As far as materials go. Um, Got a little confused with what was proposed. We do propose the, the metal siding, the best of metal siding. Um, we're not using any of the other materials. That was from the original application. So it's just simply the, the smooth metal siding. Steel, steel siding. Is there any other Open to questions. Quick clarification. You look yes. at the, the picture of the rear of the house. Yes. Is the existing chimney that kind of splits the dormer? Yes. In the drawings, it seems to be drawn go back to option C. The elevation is incorrect. Yeah. It's centered. Uh, it backs are all the way back up against them, right? No, no, it's it's centered in the footprint of the of that rear addition. Okay. 
the dormers extend from the, the rear facade of the, of the tall structure up to the chimney. Yeah, Oops. that picture here, it just appears like that dormer is all the way up against. The yeah, the dormer extends from the, the back of the principal tall portion and it extends out to the chimney. I see. It touches the chimney. So you're, you're encapsulating this existing dormer then. Got it. Yes. How old is that dormer? I so I went up there, um, poked around. There's beams dated from 2003. Um, I don't know if that dormer was original. Can't get really any good evidence of showing it's original. Uh, my guess is that got cut in to the existing framing that's up in the roof uh, back in 2005 when there was some work done. Not sure if there's an application and file on the property from back then. But that's when the property was converted from a duplex to two condos. It's now back to a duplex. Uh, if you look, I, I took some photos, didn't submit them, but um, the roof sheathing, if you look at the, the overhang on both the east and west side, you can see it changing in sheathing from, from the typical beadboard uh, to more, I think, six one by sixes uh, at some point. Up in that attic kind of crawl space, you can see that there's different coloration of the board. Some have been replaced over the years, and it is pretty spongy when you're walking across it. So it's all going to have to come off and be replaced anyway. The roofing material was uh, slate as of 84, and then sometime before 2005, it got converted over to asphalt shingles. So I'm assuming that that's not the original <laughs> roofing material back there. And option C is your choice. Correct. It engages the principal roof, the minimum as small amount as possible. We try getting it down, um, and just we can't get it down below that uh, that uh, eave overhang. But but you're not intersecting the eave overhang any more than what exists. It is currently there. Correct. That's what I'm looking at. Yep. Which is what I like to see better than the end. Yep. As far as the the dormer goes, the the cheek walls of the dormer. We're not set on how wide that wants to be. Um, really, it's, it's trying to just mitigate any kind of conditions with the engagement of that of that new addition peak. So it could get narrower. It's on the rear elevation. Yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing I've got with the dormer is the fact that it it um, the, the hip the existing hip disappears because you're. You're putting the dormer right on that edge, and I, but I don't know if that's important or not. Can you clarify what material the dummy would be? Would it be wood? Um, yeah, it'd be wood. It would match the other one to match, yeah. It would look like essentially the shutters closed, which we've seen elsewhere at the village. That's just to make it look balanced. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. We looked at some some asymmetry and just didn't didn't quite fit. Just couldn't get it to look right with the interior. It's going to be a bathroom yes, space. So Palladian. Okay. He said so Palladian. <laughs> Jeff. Comments. I like it better than what we previously approved. <laughs> it's on, less this, on this property, or on this property? Much. My goodness. Yeah, the, the quotes for the original are coming in. Any, any discussion about foot. the material and the uh, test case? Is that this material that you're proposing any different than what was in the original one? That... No, it's, it's still that same smooth steel yeah. that's yeah. deciding previously. There's no staining issue with that. Nope. It's uh, it's got a. Uh, Kind of finish on it, 50 year warranty and finish. Oh, wow. 30 year, something like that. That's a test case. It's a test case. 2605. The thought was it's on the rear of the property, you can't see it from the street. It's an opportunity to get a material in that's smooth as, as the commission typically likes to see on the siding. Um, it's good, longer life expectancy. It's a little on the higher price end, but looking Why for alternatives. For windows where the dummy windows you want. It comes down to the interior space. Um, it's going to be basically bathroom vanity countertop across that whole thing. Okay. So you're going to have with a condition of, of wet coming up against windows. So. 
tricky detail maybe with that that new material how the dummy works yeah thought was it basically frame out like a window and just have those shut go frame it out but it's a little okay yeah anything else do I have a motion? I'll, I'll try a motion here. For item PD 23 04 016. Motion to approve. Uh, yeah. Should note that the applicant has noted that the dummy windows will be trimmed out like existing windows or like the real windows. Um, and that the. Uh, Best the steel siding is being approved as a test case. The same second. I have a question about the dummy windows. Is this just a circuit supply service of blind decoration? Um, <laughs> detail wise, we'll figure out how we're going to do it. There's going to be no interior window, so we'll just, framing or anything like that. No, we're going to just kind of trim it out. It's basically we'll shutters. Yeah. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I was opposed. Motion passes. All details will go to staff. This cool was the first design. You can still leave. You can still leave. All right, uh, moving ahead, item 12, GB-23-04-0175-595 South 3rd Street. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Randy Roberti, Cameron Mitchell Restaurants. Thank you very much. Uh, the proposed work description, uh, this application was filed separately from application GB-23-04-008, which was staff approved under the staff approved items. Um, it's for landscaping. The locust tree was approved for removal in GV-23-04-008. The tree was re removed due to tree death and posing a safety hazard to people on the site and surrounding community. Arbor's report is included. Um, this, the landscaping now is to plant a 15 to 18 foot tall replacement tree to be planted in its place, either in Elm or Zalcova. Um, the staff analysis is that the, at the April business meeting, the commission had no comments or feedback for the applicant. Staff asked the applicant to clarify how the true removal will impact the approved design. The applicant clarified that the approved design remains the same. The only difference is a smaller tree in the same location as the tree. Um, the staff recommendation is that staff recommends approval with any and all clarifications to be submitted to each PO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate. And the basis from staff recommendation is 31613 uh, standards for site improvements A. Anything else to add? I think that covers it. Questions, comments from the commission? My only comment is I wish we could do something where people would stop taking trees down before they got into the I don't think that's well, going we, to happen. I think people are going to continue to do it. Well, we reached out to staff and did receive a COA for removal of the tree before we took any action. Receiving our first report that says it's an emergency, it's going to fall prior to. But the condition of that is that we have to come back. So, this is the condition of what the tree replacement not becoming that. Yeah, the condition is that the new tree is replacing. The tree coming down is due to the harvest report that says. Right, so we're, we shouldn't even be voting on that. No, no, no. Trees have already been, been approved for removal, so the application right now is for the tree removal. Right. But, my point. So okay. the, but the tree removal was approved. Yeah, okay. I'm glad you clarified it. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that was. So the, the replacement tree is the 15 feet to 18 foot. It's mature height or the size you're putting in. So it's a it's a 14 inch diameter, 14 inch, four inch diameter trunk, um, 18 feet tall, um, plus or minus. Obviously, it's a regular. Uh, Zelkova is the species we're we're intending to install, install plant. Um, Elm's the alternate option. Um, if if there's a preferred species, I mean we're we're open to to whatever the commission feels appropriate. But our landscapers seem to uh, think the Zelkova would would fit the 
Karen's oh, aesthetic. <laughs> What's that? Our landscape architect is not here today. Has recommended that Zelkova. Has he? Okay. Yeah, Jeff right. Zelkova's get to about 50 to 80 feet right. Okay. So yeah, it, it seems like it's going to grow. They grow quickly, so it's going to it's going to quickly mature. They get very big to to, to compare to what was there, uh, and it's you know, it's you see a lot of them around there, so it, it fits right in. I was recently schooled on this that you actually don't want to go too big a caliber for the replacement because if you put a bigger caliber tree and it'll grow slower. That's yeah. Okay. And it's more likely to die. Yeah. Exactly. Which you know then you start over. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. So what is what exactly are we improving here? That's what I want to replace the tree. The replacement tree. Okay, that's, that's what I want to be sure. Of. Motion to approve item GB dash two three dash zero four dash zero one seven. Second. Any questions or motion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, against? I say that motion passes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. We'd be much happier raking these leaves than <laughs> it would have been <laughs> buckets. Yeah, but unfortunately, you know, but we would love to keep the big one. It was cool trade. Look at what. All right, uh, moving on to item number 13, GV 23 04 018 742 South 5th Street. So, please raise your hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Julie Bullock. Thank you very much. The first bird description is an exterior building alteration to infill a porch. Uh, the infill a porch below a second floor addition on the south elevation. Remove a second floor balcony that was installed following a 1987 COA. To install a new 36 inch metal railing or balcony was removed. The new enclosed ports to have four windows with paneling, one door on the south elevation, and paneling on the east elevation. Windows can be approved from the list. To match the existing dream trim detail of the connection of the second story addition and the new proposed infill. Um, staff analysis at the equal business meeting, the commission requested confirmation that on the drawings where windows were shaded and panels were 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 white and expressed concern of removal of brick from the corner of the property. Staff requested confirmation that the proposed lighting picture is a downlight only. Applicant confirmed the windows are shaded and panels are white. Applicant provided that on the first floor, some of the addition is brick and some is frame. Only the brick being, uh, being only brick being removed is from the new door to the powder room, um, which would be a two foot four inch opening. So the corner of brick will remain and be exposed on the interior. Applicant confirmed the lighting, the lighting fixture can be a downlight. Staff researched the history of the property and found the main brick portion was constructed prior to 1891, including part of the rear brick portion. The second story addition was added prior to the completion of the 1950 Sandboard maps when the back portion of the house went from one story to two story. Um, in 1988, it appears the porch enclosure was altered, a stair was removed, and the second floor balcony was added. Staff also provided images from the 1984 of there being a three, three season slash screen coverage enclosure underneath the second story addition. The staff recommendation is that staff recommends the commission offer feedback and continue the application to allow the time for the applicant to amend the design to better align with the German village guidelines for additions. Um, but if the commission decides to approve the porch enclosure, it does appear to have been altered from its original design. Um, staff recommends the porch enclosure be set back from the existing post to differentiate it from the existing addition. The basis for the staff recommendation is uh, 311613 standards for site improvements, 2349, 10, and 11. Uh, and German village guidelines, porches and stoops, one. German Village Guidelines Alteration to Existing Structures Editions 1, 2, 4, and 5, and German Village Guidelines Entryways and Porch Enclosures 2, 5, and 6. Anything else to add? Um, I mean, clearly this has been modified quite a few times, and um, as it stands right now, I'm sure it's not something that you would approve today. Um, uh, we're trying to kind of rectify the aesthetics of it. Um, the uh, it, so basically what we're proposing to infill aligns with what is above. And so that's that's why we have aligning now, because we felt like recessing the back would be a little bit of an odd detail, basically. Trying to bring it back to something that is more German village in character, I guess, you know, as much as we can, given what we have to work with. So questions, comments from the commission? Yeah, like Janine was on the commission. They voted for the second story edition. Please. Yeah. 
Michael Rosen was the chair. No, that tells. In a couple of years, it'll be considered contributing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Good point. Uh, and I never understood how that document got added. I can say sorry. I have nothing to add. So the balcony and second floor addition were done in seven. 87. Okay. So I just said Michael chair. Yes. Specified the early thing so it was not time. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. The second floor addition was present by the early 1950s. So maybe we may have been before. Yeah. yeah. How far came out of the Yeah. yeah. Then from 88 to today, it's been modified again at some point, somewhere. I mean, the trim on that second floor addition is definitely a more contemporary trim. No, oh, yeah. So. They bought. They bought the house in this condition, basically, so they don't really know the history. It, it, it hasn't changed, changed much in 20 years, really. So are there any any issues with what's being proposed? I, I, would, I would just note, I think that that. The. Line in. That's to me in consideration when you look at the old 1984 pictures and there was an aligned closure. It's kind of so. So you're saying it should align or? Yeah, it should. Yeah. So, so I would that. Does anyone have any comments on casement versus double home? Because that's something else we kind of struggled with. I felt it would look more like a panel with the casement windows. So, if that makes sense to me, differentiates it from the, the that's what I the yeah. historic windows too. exactly. Forgotten about the hot tub. About the what? Hot tub. Casement going where? That infill in the lower level is casement windows. Oh, oh, oh okay. With, With transoms. It, it's reading as a, as a screened in, but it's going to be casements. Yes. Yeah. Got it. Got it. I think a double hung one must bring it up too much. Yeah. Nice we have a line at the top of the door. There's no questions or comments. Motion to approve GV-23-04-01. Does the commission want a condition with the windows be submitted to HBO staff prior to the issuance of the certificate? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And it does say from the list on the application. I have to do the construction details to to get to okay. <laughs> Definitely. With that clarification. Second. So just want to address staff's um, comment if uh, approving the porch enclosure set back this in post, we said to have it be flush as it was. That explains why. Okay. I just want to make sure staff got their answer for their comment. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a motion. We got a second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Senate motion passes. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. We're going to take a quick five minute break. we got to take care of something. <laughs> and we'll be back at uh, 5.49. Not the key to the Oh, yeah, probably. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to go back to you. I'm going to go back to you. Some of them.
Insulation in the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's the last thing that you did. Oh, yeah. Right. We're still not quite too good. Oh. So, we're talking right now. We're still talking right now. We're still talking right now. It was dark. I haven't seen it. See the end of this. Scrooges. Or in your cabinets. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 Still haven't said mm -hmm. they know where it started and what cost it. Mm -hmm. And presumed it. Hey, under construction, somebody pull up something. Uh, uh, so it, 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 it was a bit of rags, but yeah. rags, but it's latex, so it's the yeah. one with rags. It's like we were putting it with. Do you need to release the launch? And I came up with what? Oh, the guy did. It was something wrong. Oh, we can see that. And then we just Oh my god, the a turn with a little bit of fire. One goes in the total one. Yeah. All right. Uh, back on the record. Uh, item 14, GB 23 04 019 1010 Jaeger. Once you're settled, you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. Please state your name for the record. Josh Wood. Thank you. Also, I'm not an architect. You don't have to be. No, it just says that I am. <laughs> oh. oh. Steph? Uh, the proposed work description is for an exterior building operation to install new gas lanterns. To remove the existing electrical light fixtures, there's two and replace with two gas lanterns in the exact location. The gas lantern to be the Bevelo Williamsburg flush mount. The measurements are 12 and 1 8 inch high, 7 3 quarters inch wide, and 4 inches in depth. The installation will be the existing hole of the mortar from the electrical wire to run the gas line. Um, the applicant submitted a CO application for new gas light fixtures for the interviews initially proposed a more ornate fixture, the Babylon Governor bracket, a lantern inspired by historic colonial fixtures. The staff recommended the applicant work with the homeowner select a more compatible fixture, and the applicant selected the current proposed fixture, the Babylon Williamsburg flush mount. After the April business meeting, the applicant was asked to confirm the finish color and size of the proposed fixture and confirm if brick would need to be removed for the installation. The applicant confirmed the finish would be dark copper finish and the size was 22 inches. Staff had initially re recorded the fixture of 16 inches on their business meeting agenda. The applicant also clarified that no brick would need to be removed. Staff informed the applicant the size of the fixture would not meet the guidelines at 22 inches and recommended the applicant select a smaller fixture. The applicant decided to use the same fixture in the 12 inch size. Uh, following German Village guidelines for size of light fixtures. Um, staff recommends approval of any and all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval of prior patient certificate. Based for the staff recommendation is 311611 standards for alteration, 2, 3, and 9. For the German Village guidelines for exterior considerations, site lighting, street furniture, pools, fountains, and gazebos, 1, 2, and 3. Anything else to add? Questions, comments, and questions? I'm glad it's now about the same height as what's there. Concerns or comments? Is there a motion? 
Motion to approve item GB-23-04-019. Second. Any questions on the motion? Make the comment that we're replacing a fixture with a fixture as opposed to putting a new fixture where a fixture did not exist before. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We would have had a lot more questions for you if you were an architect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on to item 15, GV-23-04-020, 209 East Whittier. You're set. If you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth. Yes, sir. Please state your name for the record. James Knox with Suncraft. Thank you very much. Um, the proposed work description is new construction to install a new porch. Um, to install a new front porch measuring 8 feet by 18 feet on the north elevation of the primary structure that was built in 1978. Uh, to have wood steps, one by six tree of the skirting, cedar railings, uh, five, over, five fourths and six uh, a decking. Post to be four by four treated pine with textured smart trim. Post to have one by eight smart trim wrap and one by four smart trim cap, as well as a one by four space trim. The fascia to have a one by eight smart trim. The gutters to be five inch aluminum case style with aluminum downspouts. Soffits to be AC applied with the beds. To install a new front door on the north elevation and location of an existing virtual window. The door to install a new door to be installed is a new 30 with a new 36 inch. Header with a pure with a new pre-hung door. Staff analysis at the April business meeting, the commission requested the applicant contact building and zoning services to see if any variances are needed for the porch. Staff also requested current photos of the property for clarification of what was meant by smart trim in the application materials. Staff also informed the applicant that textured cardboard trim is not typically approved. Applicant notified staff that they were waiting on a response from building and zoning services. They also provided current photos of the property, saying that there would be. They would bring a sample of smart trim to the meeting for the commission review and clarify the drawings had had mentioned earlier textured cardboard trim and not the hardy board, but that this was incorrect and the trim will be a smart trim. Uh, staff does not typically support the use of smart trim and would recommend wood or pork. Uh, staff note, while 209 East Whittier is relatively new construction compared to other homes in German Village, staff would not support altering the existing openings per German Village guidelines. On page 177, due to the building's age of staff, the building to the building's age of 45 years, staff would consider the structure contributing. Staff recommends that the commission offer feedback and continue the application to allow the applicant time to revise their design to better align with the guidelines and code. The basis for the staff recommendation is 3116017 letters P, Q, and R, uh, following the definition of what property, um, and 311611 standards for alteration. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, and 11, and the German Village guidelines for Windows 6. Anything else to add? No, sir. Uh, so you see the sample there. Yes. Uh, and then if there's any questions or comments from the Commission, come to you, but it's Clifford. <laughs> Smart. It's a smart trip, right? Yes. It has a prime surface for applying paint finish. It's basically wood? Yes. And it's available in several board widths, four inch, six inch, eight inch. What makes it smart? Uh, just, Parking department. Yeah. <laughs> the, the glue. Smart side. So, so, interesting application because it's now a, this is a contributing structure asking to put a door in basically make a front porch and make what what is not currently the front door mm. of the distributing structure. I think I the right. So the principal has some challenges with that. Yeah. Simple. Is that still living there? You have that? I'm sorry. So I, I started talking. I have that problem. 
and I'm standing really way behind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I think we need to tackle that before we get too far. Personally, in the weeds, yeah. The weeds and, I, and I don't know that I see a path myself, but I'm interested how other brothers are. Well, we have a lot of in contributing structures, the replacement of a window by a door. In a contributing structure? Yeah, yeah. With a new porch to make it a whole No, we, no. Yeah. I wasn't going there. Yeah. It's yeah. really the totality of it. Yeah, but I think you, you need a little apart. We have done that, but we, but never on a primary facade that I know of. Put porches on. No, the one on the side of the house. I did come with us. Try to think if we put a porch on the facade, there's the side of the house. I can think of one where we let them take it off. I know we Maybe. denied one on the side elevation because the side elevation was the primary elevation. I just remember the guy was not happy. Yeah. So it's in 45 years? 40, I thought. 40. Columbus is 40, national standards 50. Okay. This is right now. To help you understand it, are you, are you following what we're going through here? Yes. Okay. Pickle we find ourselves in. Yeah. Where's the front door now? So we're on the side. It's also on the left side. The lock is. Existing walkway. Yes. Um, they, I believe it's a split unit or duplex. Is that an application for 70 or was that before we got that stuff going? Uh, was there an application back in 78 or was that before we? There was an application. Oh. It's not included in this. When were the, the guy through? I mean, I've never been a bandit over the years. Did the application predate the guidelines? Yeah. Which is tricky to have a commission without guidelines. There's a so you don't have that. 89. So there's actually a door on the east side and the west side. That we're going to look at uh, 78 application. Is what's there today, does that match 78? Has anything changed since 78? It matches, uh, it's very similar, it's not matches exactly. Okay. No, no significant changes. It wasn't door, the principal saw back then or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, I was looking at this, what was Looking for inspiration, if if I were to get to a porch on the principal facade, it, it feels like the style of house that would be along the east side of City Park. This rhythm of this style of triple openings and whatnot. And most houses of that style have a porch. There are plenty front porch throughout the I was trying to think of, I was trying to look around. And a little, little wandering of is there a house of this style doesn't much. Or do you want to argue how contributing is this? That's that's my next step until I put it this way. It is at the end of fifth, so it's right there. Yeah, it is. Uh, how is it? Is that a slippery slope then? Okay. That's there's a there's a there's a yeah there's a it is. for a reason right you know yeah it is yeah so that we don't have to and do this that. was approved as is whether we like it or not is there any evidence of what was there prior to seventy eight um uh, from what I remember putting the sandboard maps it was a big
sure we're more like a German village house or the Polish front door. Lots of houses with more side entrances. Yeah. Right. The variety is a part of the character, right? Yeah. Right. I'm not trying to I'm trying yeah. to find a way no, to look no. at it. Yeah, yeah, right. You're right. Probably not a good example, but the, the house that we let, had to we, we had to tear down on third was replaced with the house on the porch. The porch does change the street scape. The other thing we can use is is this elevation so hideous that the porch. <laughs> Say, well, take, take interest. But I don't know if that counts. True. Sure. We've we've allowed alterations like shutters on the house that been, but it had been greatly altered. Yeah, it had been greatly so altered. Right. Ugly looking. And those are gone. The shutters are gone. The That's too new to put that Greatly altered. To me, it feels like this house was one in the future. So I'm trying to get over it. It's the it's the is it contributing? Or not, I think it's well, most. but to a certain degree, the, the work of the commission before us at this stage is now part of the contributing nature of the village, right? And in particular, German village, such a long history in the United States of being one of the first neighborhoods to be doing this. It's actually historic that this was approved by the historic commission. Well, and here's the other part: the addition, the, the porch is. The porch is an addition. Yeah. We would never allow an addition on the front. True. We're having a hard time. I see that. <laughs> see how we can improve it. Yeah. But your argument of the commission's actions in the past have become part of the fabric. Part of the whole thing. We there's once they're past the contributing debate. That's true. A lot of yeah. what we've seen undone has been in the eighties. Still less than get close. Get too close. Good case. Somebody needs to tell the people. People with those. Mistakes that they need to apply to fix them. <laughs> Eighty three or later, fix them now. If this was a stoop, would it be a different conversation? No. Unless there was evidence that there was a portrait with a stoop. I can't get put in a door. How about an at grade patio? Landscape at grade patio? With no door, just a patio on the front. This connects the wall. Landscaping. Yeah. But I don't think it accomplishes what they want. Right. Maybe it's good. In sympathy with what they'd like to accomplish, but I don't think we can do it. Very. Also, the I did speak with zoning, and they said there would not be a variance necessary for a front porch. So we ended. They could go right up to the property <laughs> line with a porch, open porch. Not enclosed. It, it comes down to do our guidelines give us the leeway right. to approve altering the principal facade of a structure that we consider contributing. I think that's that's what we're struggling with. Is right. Is. Yes. We get past that line of demarcation. I think we have only if that principal facade has already been greatly altered. Altered. After the period of country, which would then sometime we need well, these owners just renovated. Well, let's be clear 82 is contributing. Well, back then, <laughs> it's only been 10 years old. Yeah, yeah. I think it is what I think what you're looking at is what was built in 78. Right. If, if Columbus was in line with the national of 50 years, it could be a different conversation. Columbus estate is 40. Maybe we have stuck with the 40. Probably we can't change that. And that'd be credible. No way. <laughs> Sorry to remind me, staff is of the same opinion. Yes. Yeah. 
uh, following the uh, COVID. Has it been reviewed in the term of JD or others to, to consider that as well? I don't think we got the votes to get you there. I think we're kind of dead in the water out the gate. Hmm. Um, so, obviously, no chance for uh, a front porch addition. We, we can go through the voting process that allows you to have whatever appeal rights you want. Yeah. I would recommend you do that. Okay. Um, if we vote yeah. and, and we don't approve, so we will vote in the affirmative. So, if we deny it, um, then applicant, you have the opportunity to go a couple of different paths. You can come back, we can hear it on, on, re, on appeal, mm -hmm. um, go to the board of zoning appeals, um, and mediation is also the third option. Yeah, I, I think appeal is first step, automatically is appeal that you're first to then deny it again. Staff can give you the, the option to pass afterwards, mm -hmm. but if we don't vote, and give you the denial, then you've got, you can't go to the next step, essentially. So it would be a vote, it would get denied, but at least you can do something else if you felt like doing something else. Yes. Okay. Like just forward. There's no room. Yeah. There's, the house takes up most of the lot with there. Let's see. Uh, I think the only. Yeah, only 31 foot wide lot. How wide and, is the building? Uh, 22. Or, uh, it looks pretty tight. You know, yeah, <laughs> got, uh, I don't know a lot. Oh, six and a half feet. I was thinking. Yeah, I want to say it's twenty-two. I want to say it's twenty-two is the width of the house. But it's not. It's seven too, right? The plan's got six and a half on both sides. My, my thirteen. I'm going the, to the, the porch. Is brought in from the edges. It doesn't go completely to the edge of the house. I, my mind was going. If you don't have proper amount of clearance. On the side properties that have the egress per city, that could be a hardship route you could take. Of you need to have a legal entrance, and there's not enough room on the side of the house. Principal size, the only location that could be an avenue. I'm not saying it would work, but <laughs> there are wood steps to a platform to a door on both sides. Yeah, so that's trying to take you down the path of my mind, but my mind wants. Yes. All right. All right. So appreciate the input. I'll make a motion then. Uh, motion to approve GD 23 04 020. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? All those against? Aye. Uh, motion denied. As far as the backup for that, um, going with the staff recommendation basis 316.017. Letters P, Q, and R, uh, 3116.11, uh, items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11. Um, and then Jerry Bill's guidelines under Windows, item 6. That's all we got. Uh, and if you want to give us that after, they can direct you to next steps. Okay. All right. Is that something we follow with? Tomorrow or um, the minutes take about three to five business days. Okay. We'll follow up after that. Follow up after that. Okay. Great. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving ahead to item sixteen, GB F two three dash zero four dash zero two one, one two nine Jackson Street. Once you're settled, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth. It's all truth. Nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Kayla Mahoney. Thank you so much. Um, the proposed burn description, this is for an exterior building alteration for a garage addition. To add approximately four feet to the overall depth of the existing garage on the property so that a vehicle can fit with the garage. The extended portion of the garage will be finished to match the existing and a new membrane roof will be installed. Existing concrete driveway and apron will be replaced with the new concrete and extended. The garage door, um, side door and window to be replaced. It'll be a wood panel garage door, 10 feet by 8 feet, to be larger than the previous garage door opening. The man door to be a new wood four panel transom. White stucco to match existing. Install a new wood fixed window. A new gooseneck light, the architectural bronze gooseneck outdoor wall scones, will be added above the garage door. A new fence will be added to the south property line to match existing. And to install a new half round aluminum gutter on the east elevation to be painted to match. Replace the existing band board on west and north elevation with a new one by ten feet into match. 
Uh, staff analysis of the April business meeting, the commission requested a photo of the existing garage door and recommended that because of the date of the garage, the design may need to be reconsidered so the addition does not match the historic section and materials or appearance. The commission also requested information on how the garage extension would interact with the fence. Staff requested the paint color and staff provide sandboard maps and or the construction date for the garage. The applicant provided a photo of the door. The applicant stated that due to the size of the addition with the of the material of the addition being different from the historic garage was appropriate. The applicant provided that the extended garage will not touch the existing fence, but will be built right up to it. The paint color will be Sherman Sherwin Williams SW7566 of West Island White. Staff found that the garage was most likely constructed prior to 1951, as there isn't a cinder block garage with a similar footprint that appears in the 1951 sandboard. Uh, staff recommendation. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to the issuance of the certificate with the following conditions. Um, and the recommended conditions are for the applicant to amend the design to differentiate the addition from the historic section of the garage and to maintain the existing door garage door opening. And new drawings to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to the issuance of a certificate. The basis for the staff recommendation is 311611, standards for alteration 134 at 10, and the German Village guidelines alterations to existing structures for additions 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Anything else to add? So um, I believe that the way the addition works, because of that wedge shape, if we were to keep the existing garage door, does that mean I'm I'm not sure it would work still. We can study it. Um, I think the shift occurred so that you could pull a car in there still. Looking at the <clears throat> looking at the sandborn from 51, it looks like that's extended to the property line, the whole thing. If I'm reading that correctly. Whereas now it's kind of cut short. And looking at the materials, that that rough block on the north facade, which is on the interior yard side, don't have rough down the street side. Inside, it looks like there's a. So rough plot facing in versus out, it definitely gets some alteration over time. Um, one of my questions is the application shows the door height getting taller. Yes. Looking at the photos, looks like the roof is sloping from the street side, the west side, down to the east. Right. And that garage door looks like it's right up against the joists. Is there going to be a pen height to grow that garage door taller? Excellent question. Um, I'm not sure. We will have to study that. Looks there, like the, there, the may be more, there might be more room than the way the picture is taken. Uh, we will have to measure that. But yes, that is it is sloping that way. My concern is to try to grow that garage opening taller, get the roll of door to. to Get enough clearance, it'd be hitting right into those joists and you know, yeah. taking off roofs of the garage just to make a tall garage door fit. So, right. I think that needs to be reviewed a little bit. Okay. Um, it did look like from your initial application to this application, um, mm -hmm. the alignment with property line got fixed and everything. So it looked like it was kind of skewed before. Yeah, I think we are looking to that. So, that takes care of my concern about that. If you wanted to keep the extension the same stucco, would you be able to inset it a little bit? Sure. Actually, I I was thinking we might actually need a control joint or something since that's going to be, you know, subtle. So, yeah. Probably side street. Yeah, maybe, street. Uh, maybe don't make it. If it comes, you know, parallels the garage or perpendicular to the garage door rather than on the angle. Clearly, an addition. Well, um, is it eight inch block? That's there right now, like mm -hmm. six inch block, maybe, and then get it. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that the old core is visible. I agree. Something to differentiate it. Show. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, on the bottom picture in the center, we'll zoom in at the very base <clears throat> of that wall. Is there a board material on the exterior face of this, or is this just simply a barge coating over block? Because it looks like peeling away. Yeah, the street side at the corner. It looks like it's kind of peeling away, almost looks like a board product kind of kicking out. We, we're talking about that with the nose. Yeah, right down there. And it might just be how the picture looks with pixelation, but it almost looks like it's a board product kind of curling out away from the wall. So I'm wondering what. What's underneath? <laughs> I, <laughs> Assuming it's just tell, I, That's what we assume as well. I don't think it's furred out or anything. Um, it might just be deteriorating a little bit, yeah. or just the photo is weird or something. It might be. I'm sure, whatever we're putting back in, we understand what the, the condition is of materials and how they're going to interact with everything else. Matt, how do you feel about removing the existing wall? The garage door wall? Yeah. Um, I think it has to to make it work, but definitely the addition just needs to be enough to give depth to the garage. And traditionally, well, that's what people did. Yeah. I think the cars got bigger, the garages were built small, they either pushed out the other side. You can't do it here. Well, I don't know why you can't. It's a big structure. Um, but there's not. Yeah, no. Yeah, I don't know why they can't go out the other way. Um, it could be just enough for the bonnet of the car to get underneath. It's what they used to do. Um, or come out the front just parallel with parallel and perpendicular to the that back wall. Enough to give you the extra depth. How much depth do you need? What are you short? Only three feet. Three feet, yeah. Yeah. We talked about this on the house on Yeager. We wanted to rebuild that garage. We gave him the option of Going up the other side on the north side. Yeah. But my thought is that north side has that extra block. And you can see it. And if the 51 sandboard is right and the garage went all the way to the south end of the property, that means that this has been cut back, which means that south facade of the garage is not there. I don't think the sand is right. Here we go. I, I do agree, though, Anthony, the north side of the garage is visually more interesting. I'm trying to remember because I remember the, the charging of this at one time was bad. Really bad. Maybe I'm thinking of the house. Maybe I'm thinking of the house. Oh, this um, Sandboard maps. D. It's typically the well, correct? Yes. The garage in 51 sandboard map has a D and a CB. <laughs> On the 51? Yeah. That one H. Yeah. I guess I'm doing the H dance board. I do not have an H. So it may not have been the garage originally. It may have been an auxiliary structure of some kind of. It may not be the same building. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a little front porch. It's not It's Well, it's got to be. I mean, that block is, is that era. as early as 1900. But if you look at the inside, you've got what looks like an infill door patch with the rumble block facing. Yeah, I know. And it's a patch. I'm not going to argue with it. It's, it's I, I don't know. I'm wondering if the, if the street side used to be, like, was there a garage door open there and it wasn't an automobile garage? Was it just a, another structure? I'm wondering whether this one story portion, square portion with the truncated. If, if that's the if that's the building we're left with. That's they, that's no, that's the house. Oh, we're talking about this building. Yeah, this, yeah that thing's down there. Took the yeah. second one. Yeah. Just did. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I <laughs> the same. So it all slows and he's proposing that they cut yeah. that chunk off. Yeah. yeah. What I'm saying is if, if, if this has been altered from 51, are there any photos with it being right next to the, the uh, record store? It might be some historic photos showing some stuff in here. Was it dwelling originally a secondary dwelling or something or a shop? That south facade may not be original. Maybe that may be the least original thing on this building. In which case, I wouldn't be okay with moving it south. I'd rather see him go north. Yeah, I, I I agree with Anthony that I think that that north elevation is more interesting. It's in, it's inside. It's not yeah. 
you can see it. Yeah, okay, but but say you go out three feet, six feet high to get the front end of the car out. You're not gonna see that from the street. H on the stand one that means hoist way. Basement to first floor. So the oh so kind of utility bubble they were mechanics and um it wasn't an elevator. <laughs> I mean, you go, I, you go south, and it's got to look like something totally different. There's something interesting about it. The whole house, the way it's situated on the street, is it's, it's very unique. I'm staking myself on that. It's the original footprint, the original north wall. No, oh, I'm not. I, I think it is too. I think what you're looking at is original. I think it's probably hundred more than hundred years old. So I would say the north end being the original boundary of the original wall. Take more presence of the south, which we could cut back. And yeah, I think they're, I think they're both. No, I'm disagreeing. I don't think it was cut back. I'm not buying this in the game. I mean, just look at, look at how the first one. Look at how the house is configured in the second one. They, they didn't even get this to me. But they wouldn't have made it that big if it was this small. They would have made it more of this size. Just there. I don't know. I'm looking at the house. I mean, look at how the, the house is the house difference from the first one to the second one. That's that's what I'm telling you. The accuracy is not Sanborn's give you a gesture, an ocean, but they're not accurate. But they wouldn't be so so far different to make this little tiny garage as big as the whole house. Scale wise, you can still get some scale. There's no way they would have taken this small structure and drawn it the entire size of the, the primary structure. You mean this one here? Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not I don't think that's it. That's what you want. That's that's the I don't think that's it. So you think that in 51 was taken down and something else put up? No, I don't I don't just don't think in 51 they registered. That's the actual 51 screen name of the code. This is the 1961 update. Just trying to see real quick if maybe I had it in the site. So Anthony, you're you're supposing that they chopped that blue thing in half, basically. Chopped the blue thing in half, and if there was a so maybe the garage door was on the side. I didn't think so it was on the side. I guess it looks like there that infill was a man door. This is probably a shop of some sort that extends to the south end of the property. That, that's where I think what the, the, the C D stands for. Hey, yeah. concrete but in, Okay. Anthony, why couldn't this have been a door? I think that might, that might be not a man door. The maintenance overhead door, long yeah. door. Yep. They always did things out. So I'm in favor of moving south north. I'm okay moving south. Yeah. I'm not. That's what I use the I'd rather take a garage. Which have a garage in this. This is south, yeah. Yeah, so the garage source back. On the south side. How about you, Jeff? Which which are you yeah, are you falling in? Yeah, so I don't think of that or a whole bunch. <laughs> Probably true. Really, I mean, I, uh, Sanborn seemed seemed unreliable. Yeah, to a certain extent, it's just not the matches here. You know. So, so I think generally we're as a commission probably okay moving south. Yeah. We get three, four moving south. One definitely no. One. I didn't say definitely. Okay. Well. You've what? gotten three of the <laughs> five here. <laughs> so I, I think. But should it, if you're going to go that way, should it look like if you it's just an extension that has nothing, doesn't represent new construction? Right. And Teresa was, was proposing maybe a little inset, material uh, change, material change, something to make it look different. I, I would say, I would say height too. I don't think it, I think that upper so, pair of it needs to stay. To stay. Yeah. So it's, it, the new structure should be lower than this. Yeah, it? agreed. We like to see the the new structures be sitting in where we Yeah, that mm -hmm. makes me subservient. Subservient, thank you. And if, if the garage door height can't be increased due to the ceiling joists, then it kind of makes the net the need for it to be taller mm -hmm. a move point for this. Even if we, I guess, that tile that's at the top of that paraffin, if that was salvaged and put on the new. No, we like to see it. It stays. Yeah. So they've got something that 
plotting in below it. Yeah. And I'm okay with living in Rotunda if it's in because of the massing change. Yep. I, I'd be okay with that. I like the idea of changing it too, but I'm okay with it being set. Yep, I think you gotta be able to read the original mass. So I think to get you there we need to see another design. Um which I would think. Continuance would be kind of take these comments and come back. <laughs> Any other comments? Sorry, I missed the code. Yeah, and maybe you'll find something out about whether like, that stucco is actually on the block or is it on a piece of plywood that was applied to the block and how high it can then garage door actually. It looks like a stucco bead. To be honest with you. It's like what? Stucco bead, a bead that's letting go at the bottom. Take it with plaster with it. Yeah, and what's the preference? What do we want to see? Is it that if it's attached to the plywood, that's not as durable? Is there a situation where it would all need to be replaced? Is that what you're getting at? I don't think so. I think it's repair. Okay. Repair. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Now that we're asking for that west wall to be changed. I would ask for the next application um, photo of that east. Did you get one from the east? It looks like from the uh, from the elevation, looks like you can see the roof. Like the parapet kind of runs this way, the roof is below it. Mm -hmm. That gutter over there, uh, like there's no parapet on that side. Yeah, you're showing a half round gutter. There's no overhang. Half round would be appropriate. I think a case style is on there currently in the picture. So the right gutter for that application would be important. Okay. So picture. Yeah. Okay, we get the wall. Okay. Oh, yes. Um anything else. That's a very proper. You're going to look weird, man. Yeah. All right. What a motion. Unless I forget anything else we want to. Motion to continue item GD 23 04 021. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Against? I say the motion passes. You will design. Thank you. Yeah, it is. All right, uh, moving forward to item 17, GB-23-04-022, 540 South 6th Street. First street to say. <laughs> Texas, you got there. both raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. And your name, sir? Sean Files. Thank you. Chelsea Hay. Thank you very much. Uh, the proposed road description um, for landscaping. Uh, to retain all perennial trees, shrubs, and grass on the property, retain all perennial flowers, retain landscaping as not identified on the drive. To install low, less than three foot Ohio native sources of perennial quality culture landscaping, install two to three mint of height less than 10 feet, visibility blocking Ohio native evergreen shrubs, arborvitae. Uh, convert the gravel footer at the west edge of parking pad to a sloped landscaping bed. There will be no hardscape or structure. Repair the two iron post lamps to working order. There's also hardscaping to install a small hot tub for a three to four person, approximately seven by seven feet, as near to the back of the house on the north side of the privacy, of the privacy fence, code will allow. To install a 220 volt electric line to provide adequate power to the hot tub and the electric vehicle charger. To install a discrete electric vehicle charger in a locked cabinet, roughly no larger than a fence mounted garden hospital next to the existing concrete parking pad. The concrete parking map was approved in 2014. To install a wooden privacy gate, fence height uh, across the brick walkway connecting the two repair sections of the privacy fence in the middle of the yard. Fence and gate to match the existing. Install below eye level, approximately four to five feet patio string lighting to the house and fencing surrounding only the private back patio. Install a black metal arbor over the brick walkway on the east alleyway side of the privacy gate. The dimensions are 83.85 inches high, 53.15 inches wide, and 22.83 inches in depth. The exterior building alteration to remove the security bars from the windows, the only change the structure. 
Staff analysis at the April business meeting, the commission discussed the materials packet. The commission sought clarification on the photo on the last page showing an iron fence and a wooden privacy fence as indicated on the site plan. And staff uh, requested the applicant resubmit the language specification information for the charger cabinet as the link did not work. The applicant resubmitted the link and clarified that no changes are proposed to the wrought iron fence on the last page. The fence that needs repair is visible in the photo for figure five. The fence formerly by the property. Only the south post remains to the south portion, while the north portion is damaged and is flat. Staff added all the specification information to the materials packet. The staff recommendation and staff recommends approval of any all clarifications based on the date of staff review and approval prior to the issuance of the certificate. This is the basis for staff recommendation is 31613 standards for site improvements A and German Village Guidelines site finding tree furniture, pool towns, and gazebos 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6. Anything else to add? Uh, no, thank you. Questions, comments from the commission? I just want to know that uh, the key with the pictures on the little. Yeah, I, I did the best I could. <laughs> He's on. It's, it's super helpful. I did this all in PowerPoint too, so I don't have. Wow. I don't have those uh, professional skills. <laughs> <laughs> He's a professional. <laughs> <laughs> So what you're changing, no changes is re regarding fencing or pavement in the front yard. No, no, just the side yard. It's in the back that you're taking a lot of the brick out to replace with. Oh, we're not taking any brick out. Oh, because I'm looking at this one picture. It's just a we haven't, we've just purchased the property. There are some piles of bricks. We have not removed those. Those, those were like that. Okay, so, um, figure four. Yep. All that brick in the back. Yeah, that's we have not done that. But is it all stayed? No, that that is just a pile of brick. So I don't. We will move that pile of brick, but I don't know. But all the pavers that are the paper. Paper. I'm talking about the paper. Yeah, all the pavers will stay, and that pile that's by the house will go into yeah. the basement if we need to like repair or anything. But all the brick itself that's laid will stay as paper. Yeah, we haven't taken anything up or made any changes. So the the square that we see that's key number five on figure four, I think it's just for the string lights then. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think that maybe you thought they were changing something with the layout based on that. Well, yeah. I mean, this pathway that goes, they drawn through the middle of the backyard, and I assume that that was going to stay brick and everything north and south was going to become landscape. So. No, we're, we're leaving. I, we're leaving all of the current brick that's in place. There are a few places where we're going to repair it and just bring it level, okay. uh, but otherwise we're not making any changes to it. Uh, what's happening under the hot tub? It's going to be on the concrete platform or something, or is it sitting on the brick? Uh, we're going to put it on the brick. We could also put it on. They do make uh, material that goes on top. You could put on top of the patio that you put the hot tub on. I don't know that that's necessary. Wasn't sure how level the brick was, but yeah. I, my plan is to re-level the patio as it is. There's there's already some pretty severe divots in there that are going to collect water, uh, but we're just going to put it up and. Refill the base, redo the sand, put exactly what we took out back in. I think what you're struggling with is, is the scale. Yeah, the photos. I'm, see I'm that assuming that this is brick. Yeah. So and you this at, is not. You look at figure five. There's, you'll see a fence. Yep. Kind of part way up yep. there. You look at the plan. That's the that's that red line, bold line when it runs through eleven. Yep. Okay. So. Especially the four that was kind of taken from where so, the fence was. So the the four ground yeah, that's yeah. things. Okay, I get you. Yeah, and that I, fence. I'm standing at that fence line. The focal depth of the pictures make it look a little longer. Compared okay, to the scale gotcha. Of the gotcha. Okay, good. I have no issues. The one thing I saw there, there's a gate being added. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Only one section of that privacy fence uh, remains. There's some posts, uh, but the the bulk of the fence is gone. So I, I'm not sure if that fence that separated the property had a gate crossing the walkway. Yeah. We would like there to be a gate. In that gap. Right? In that gap between the two sections of privacy fence. That would be a, we're proposing a wooden gate that would match to the design of the fence. And then for one piece of clarification on figure six, So the plan, the 
south side, so it's just probably against the whole length. But there's there's iron fences staying going from the east property line past the concrete pad. Yeah, to I, some portion somewhere it stops. Yeah, I'm not even sure if that fence is technically on our property or on the neighbor's property. It gets a little squirrely there, so we're not we're not amending. That. Okay, I, I just noticed that the the fence doesn't actually extend as far as the plan shows. So I want to make sure. Look at everything. PowerPoint, forgive me. Oh, good. So. <laughs> All good. That was good. Better than most. <laughs> yeah, I think that, I mean, we'll have to. But the fence that is there where you're going to put the gate is, is a true dog ear fence. Looks like it's easy to Which it's existing, right? It can't be. Am I reading that right? Is it? It looks like big pickets to me. Pickets, well. Except they're points. Yeah, I don't know. But it's not the type of typical like points. Yeah, the pointed. Yeah. Um, Both of the neighboring fences are are very similar, and we would like to match to what the neighboring houses have. So it looks like one continuous. Yeah. So you style. Can place that fence all together. Put all together. To yeah. match those other fences. Yeah. That'd be great. So just to your point, picking versus dog ear. Did some historical research going back to older catalogs, what they call different things. Our damages has changed over time. Yeah, so I just, it's, it's a conversation point. Really looks like a dog's ear. <laughs> yeah, that's, that tends to be what a lot of the old, day, old ones call right. boy dog ears. I need to find time to do this. I get bored and go down YouTube rabbit holes. Oh, yeah, I did that. YouTube's really bad for people. Not part of this application, but we got to have a conversation or something. It'd be helpful. I'll do some research. Hey, any other questions, comments, concerns? There are none. Is there a motion? Motion to approve G dash two three dash zero four dash zero two two. Second. Healer's choice. Uh, any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Stand up. Motion passes. I know this new guy works at the beginning. Oh my gosh! Gotcha. I don't know <laughs> when you guys are going to eat, so we're going to go eat. So <laughs> hopefully you can so too. All right, uh, moving on to item number 18, GV-23-04-023, 549 South 6th Street. Once you're settled, you're pleased that you're right. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Anson Barrett, property owner. Thank you very much. The post work description is for landscaping, trim the silver silver maple tree, grind stump and replace the tree with the one, two inch London plane tree. To remove the landscape bricks for tree removal and replace the bricks once the tree once the new tree has been installed. Staff analysis. At the April business meeting, the commission requested a photo of the entire tree and staff requested the photos of the base of the tree. The applicant has provided updated photos. A staff recommendation a staff recommends approval of any all the clarifications be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval for application certificate with the following conditions. The condition being as the applicant has already proposed to be plant a tree to be planted at the same location in one year. The basis for the staff recommendation is 311613 for the oversight improvements. Yeah. Anything else to add? No. No questions, comments from the commission. Like to go back 40 or 50 years and have a talk with whoever playing with all these silver nipples. Oh, no kidding. I'm like four in my yard and one by one they came down naturally. <laughs> yeah. And with without having Christian McCoy here, Christian McCoy here, uh, the London plane trees go to a height of 75 to 100 feet with a spread of 80 feet of maturities. This is a shade tree. An item GV 230403 549 South 6th Street. I move to approve this and then second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I have the motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, item 19 was withdrawn. Item 20 GV 23 04 025 684 South 3rd Street. Please call us. Let the record show. Fully been accused. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I swear. And what's your name? Matthew Teisman, MKC Architects. Thank you very much.
Um, the proposed work description is for new construction and exterior building alteration and for design changes. On the south elevation to replace existing glass block infill with two light windows for safety concerns. Windows will be the same size opening as what is existing. On the east elevation, there's a change of design from a five bay configuration to a three bay configuration due to wall integrity. On the north elevation, there's uh, to convert the design from three bay windows to uh, fill in the middle window with masonry. On the north elevation, to reduce the size of the windows next to the arched opening due, part, due partly to structural reasons. The staff analysis, the applicant submitted revised drawings to be stamped as part of the previously approved revisions for GB 22-12-029, approved by the commission in December of 2022. Before stamping the document, staff reviewed the elevation drawings and there's the four major changes in design that had not been reviewed by the commission. Staff notified the applicant they would need to return to the commission and applicant submitted a new application for the new changes. At the April business meeting, the commission asked the applicant to revise their package to show the previously approved design next to the new proposed design. Applicant has amended their application materials packet. Uh, staff recommendation is that staff recommends to continue the application to allow the applicant time to revise their design with fewer changes to the existing and proposed window openings. And the base staff recommendation is 31611 standards for alteration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 9, and 11, and German build guidelines for windows 1, 2, 3, and 6. Anything else to add? Well, first, uh, I want to apologize. Uh, we weren't trying to put, pull a quick one or anything like that. I thought this had been submitted. The architect who was on this project, Phil Cody, has left my firm and works for a different firm now. So there was a little bit of a miscommunication during transition. So I apologize to the commission for that. Um, secondly, you know, as you know, dealing with uh, this project, we had a very limited uh, site constraints. Uh, we tried to do everything we could to utilize as much of the existing space within the building as we could, which is why you're seeing uh, the glass block be replaced with other windows. And uh, as you also know, with existing buildings, uh, structural integrity is difficult. And as we've gone throughout this process, we've needed more substantial masonry walls to help with the structural integrity, which is why you see the reduction of the windows. That's all. In this elevation here, is this the only existing building that you're changing? All the rest is new construction. Uh, yeah, that's correct. Or demo of the existing building to allow for the new construction. But yes, the only this is the only part of the existing building that would be remaining that has any change to it. So and it's last block is being replaced by glazed with openings. Correct. Okay. All right. And that's uh, occupied space behind the principal's office. Okay. I, I have no issues with the changes they're making to the new construction. I have no issues with the fact that they're taking the last block out and putting in place to open. I just I have a question on the east wall, the, the rhythm I think being compressed in the center, but it's on the rear of the building. It's, it's, it's not that odd. It. It's not that odd there to me, to be honest. Be the architects. I, I, I would either one would be important. That's why they're not. I'm not a centrist. So the other architects here are the lawyer. Me. Structural engineer says this must be done. So it must be done. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking too. I know, and I, I don't mirror that. Uh, there's no uh, yeah. concerns or issues. Contractors can say it's cost going to cost more, and that's okay. It's always going to cost more. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Any uh, questions or comments on the application? An item GV 2304025684 South Third Street. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any question on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. Have it. Motion passes. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Nicole, thanks for your help today. Sorry for us from earlier. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, item 21 has been withdrawn. I'm moving on to uh, accept the application item 22. GV-23-04-027, which uh, consists of 30 and 40 Columbus Street, 762 Pearl Street. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Kyle Green. Much. I list for a lot combination of exterior building alteration. The lot combination is to combine three adjacent parcels, 30 and 40 Columbus and 762 Pearl Street, in a zone R2F residential district, proposed use is three residential units. The exterior building alteration is um, on 30 Columbus to add a new shed dormer on the north and south side. 
Measurements to be eight feet by eight feet one inch. Dormers to have windows from the approved windows list. Forty Columbus is to replace the original industrial metal windows where there are current currently bricked in openings. New windows to match existing, and to install a new egress window opening on the west elevation of the existing brick structure. On seven six two Pearl Street, to install new windows on each side of the existing floor on the south facade, to install a new stair access to the rooftop to the new rooftop deck. At the April business meeting, the commission asked for clarification on if there's proposed change in use and what variance would be needed for that change. They requested information on the variances needed for the rooftop access and requested an alley study to show the heights of the adjacent properties. The commission requested that staff provide sandboard maps and or the approximate date of the construction for all three buildings. Staff has provided sandboard maps for 1991, 1921, and 1951. And the 1921 and 1951 sandboard maps show buildings at all three properties. It just shows there are, there are buildings there. Um, staff recommendation. Staff recommends that the commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future TBC meeting. The basis for the staff recommendation, noted that no action is required, is 311611 standards for alteration 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9, and 10, and 31613 uh, standards for site improvements A. Anything else to add? Uh, I'll pass out a list of the variances. Um, yeah, so I would like to just quickly um, explain why we want to combine the lots. Um, uh, and, and then we can sort of talk about the details after. Uh, so currently three buildings on, on three parcels. Uh, most of the setbacks are minimal, one foot. Uh, some of the windows have been bricked in. And the problem with that is we can't we can't reopen them because they're so close to the property line since they've already been covered. Um, also, the buildings uh, over past um, renovations and, adi and additions are connected. So 762 Pearl and 40 Columbus, you can walk right through. It's one office space, even though they're on two separate parcels. 30 Columbus is physically attached to 40 Columbus. You can't walk through the interior space, but the roof line comes across and, and they're actually you know, connected. Um, and that's again across a, a parcel line. Um, currently, the buildings are vacant, previously used as offices, office space. Um, originally, it zoned R2F, and so they will be three residential um, units again. Um, but with that, um, we'd like to open up some of the existing windows. So by combining the lots, we get rid of those interior uh, lot lines that are causing us issues on um, those big giant, you know, the big three windows um, on 40 Columbus um, are really great. And we'd love to open those back up. They're bricked in on the inside. Um, you can sort of see some of the steel and glass that were, that were there before, um, before on the outside. We'd like to replace those. A couple of spots, um, you know, being a residential uh, uh, unit, we would need some um, egress windows for the bedrooms. Um, and so we would propose a couple of new windows at um, what we think is inconspicuous areas. Um, and uh, then there's a, we can talk about the dormers and the roof deck and all that, but I just wanted to sort of explain um, why we would wanted to combine these lots. Right, questions so much to the commission. Um, in regards to those windows that have been bricked in, those are old steel mm -hmm. basement windows. Yeah, uh, I think we're going to want to see really good particular details of the windows that are going in. Is right. It, uh, I mean, those are cool old windows that they don't often get replaced very well. Um, sometimes people just put like a storefront in with yeah you know, a twin side grid or something. We want something that's good. I, not replicate necessarily, but something that speaks to it. Two questions on that. One, replace person versus restore. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great to have an assessment um, to whether or not they could be restored. Um, you'd have to figure out how to handle their casement. So a, a, a storm window on a casement is a trickier thing. Yeah, double hung. But being, I'd love to see it saved. Yeah, being an original window, I mean, part of the beverage. What Absolutely. we do is there a possibility to save them and become a, a significant architectural feature. And I think it's a unique, and special detail that speaks to a part of the of the, the district that's not often represented anywhere. I love the same thing. Uh, and item two, if they have to be replaced, they can't be saved. Going back to when we went around 
staff might have this information. Um, when we did the approved windows lists, there was a storefront, I believe, or uh, uh, this kind of style that was used for the properties back at that time, but staff is impressed with this kind of condition. I think it's done poorly, bad, a lot. Yeah, I'm just not sure if those got put on the approved list or if those didn't. Might be some history about this type of window being approved somewhere. Yeah, I just remember it kept popping up, and we're like, "Whoops, you guys, we did them." <laughs> Versus they like an actual steel window. Yeah. Yeah. Have you had luck restoring this back? Been tough. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> I would say too, even in the operating, you've got I think you've got two bench shown on the bottom. It looks like it's actually one large bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah, portion of that opens. Yeah. They're cool, and we're losing a lot of them. Sandblasted. I think the lot connecting makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> it's really the only way we could come up with doing, you know, bringing the windows back. And and even some of them on the other property lines, we're not going to bring back, we're not going to be able to because it's adjacent properties that we can't, you know, worry about. But they've, you know, these big openings on the, um, that'd be the east side of that same building, and they've reduced them to little transoms. And we can't open them up because it's like six inches from the property line. Yeah, but it's kind of a shame. So the, the two large dormers is, is strictly to get a master bedroom. Type it's an room. attic space now. Um, I did do a couple of quick sections. Um, it's really weird. I mean, it's really weird. It's like five foot high. That's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I, I just quickly cut. They're not super well um, formatted, but you go up to a lane. The stair is there already, and you go up to the landing, and it's like you're basically crawling up the last bit of stairs. And then the, the roof is about, I think I put a, a 710 to the peak. So the dormers are strictly to meet an attic conversion, 50% um, square footage at, at seven feet, and um, tried to minimize that as much as possible. I know the shed dormer is not. Um, so it's because of the narrowness of the attic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so the the um, dormer on that you see on this top elevation that's facing the interior of the site. That's the one where it allows for head height up. The other dormer, which faces uh, Columbus, uh, allows for there's a there's a a brick chimney you see in there that cuts through the space, and it just allows for space around the chimney and to get that 50 percent ahead uh, seven feet to make it a livable space for building code attic conversion okay. question on the on the uh, 40 columbus uh, floor plan which would be page 15 of the application actually stay right there so if three Steel windows, you're proposing a new window to be cut out. Egress because it's a bedroom. Looking at the plan on page 15, does the bedroom have to be there? Is, is the architecture driving? Is the floor plan driving this window opening, or is this the only way it could be done? That would be the only egress window. Well, we have there's another egress window at the at the other bedroom that falls at the end of that, I'm going to call it like the little alley, the pathway between the buildings. And those will be the only egress windows in the entire um, in the t entire unit. Uh, we're not messing with the front because it's beautiful and, you know, big storefront windows. The entire wall on the bottom of the page is the one that's six inches from the property line. There's a few trans those those windows that are shown on there that those are the ones I talked about where they they took a big window and gotcha. moved them up to a transom. Okay. Um, so those are the, really the only two locations that we've identified to even put an egress with. So, um, and, and between those egress windows is where 30 Columbus juts into it. Gotcha. Um, it was tricky. I'll say that. Uh, yeah, we didn't have any elevations or, or photos of, of that uh, <coughs> east facade back of here. So okay. Back. Yeah. Check that. There is something about the Pearl Street elevation with that new egress window. Just 
the rhythm it breaks up that rhythm of the beautiful old windows. Yeah, and I think we can. Yeah, um, I, I don't know what the solution is, but it's just uh, speaking to it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it, it could be higher if if we thought it might be better to align the head heights. Um, it can't. Well, the, the sill can't be higher, but the window could be taller. Is this there's a requirement? Still be lower. Maybe a half of the width of. Same so height as the other windows. Half 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 half. Half. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like, like just grass space, yeah. and that just that's, that's a good thing. idea. Yeah, a single bed. Yeah, feels more intentional. The material on the new rooftop access, or is that? Is it just a stair going to an existing doghouse? That doghouse isn't there. No, no, that's the doghouse is new. Um, I don't, I don't call out a material. Um, we would probably, there's nothing really to match. There's, um, we could probably just do a, a horizontal. Yeah, but if, if the dormers are get, 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 get approved, yeah, we'd love to match the dormers. Um, which is like a lap siding. Yeah, we could do that. I'm just asking. Yeah, 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 no, that means. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't know a lot of stuff. Yeah. Something that's come up before um, when we get to these second floor patios, rooftop patios, above what you will, um, is what does it do for neighbors' privacies? Um, so a lot of times you see it on the alley side or looking at the alley or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. the question is, Right now, this is kind of shifting oh. back. Just doing a little Google drive by. Uh, it looked like it was all backyards, all kind yeah, of right pretty in Pretty much, yeah. So that might be a concern. Neighbors may have an issue with it when they come. Um, in this situation, your, your street side is the, the west side. So it makes sense to move the patio to the west side. So you're facing the public way as opposed to the private side. Um, the the only thought I had with that, with keeping it towards the back, is the adjacent house is right next door with a couple yeah, of windows. windows. You see that gable at the front. I sort of didn't want to have a patio outside that window, but I understand uh, what you're what you're getting at. Uh, you know, if it became a, an issue, there's a property, the old auto barn, kind of just down the street from from Lindy's. It was a problem. Lindy's itself was was an issue. Um, couple other properties that have done something like this has come up mm -hmm. and to varying degrees of concern for the neighbors. And it might just be reaching out to the neighbors yep. and, and getting their feedback. And if they come in support of it, well, that kind of mitigates the concern here. Okay. Are you going to need a guardrail? Oh, that's good ask. Yeah, we didn't show one. That was my next point. Okay. Um, we'll, we will need a guardrail. I, there's not much of a parapet on the existing, and I don't think we. We're not going to propose to extend anything, any wall up. So it would probably be a guardrail that is inset from the exterior wall so that it sort of has it softens that and you don't see it as much. Um, and um, I, I don't have a material, but I mean, to, to mitigate the issue, you could put a higher guard on the north and the east or yeah, east side to make mm -hmm. it tall. Almost like a fence instead of a guardrail, I can probably just a fence that okay. basically blocks the view so you can't look down. <laughs> just again, a thought. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Gives them privacy out there too. Yeah. Gotta be careful about the height. I like that it's set back. I like that the, the doghouse is not taller. And I don't think so. I'm thinking of on page 16, 6.01, looking at that uh, Pearl Street elevation. I'm standing on, on the other side of Pearl Street, I'm looking at this property because that doghouse is going to be as little there, I think, sticking up. Well, I don't think you'll see it as much as shown on this flat yeah. elevation for, for sure. sure. Right. Um, and you know you're going to see it uh sort of at an oblique angle right so you'll see some side of it it won't just be the front 
Um, and but I can certainly show a uh, 3D image of that next time if that helps. That's kind of what I'm thinking about the, the fence idea too, but it gets the mass up there and it doesn't seem like it's this thing sitting up there by itself. Right. It's like it's just three piece, but you had on top that it's something mm -hmm. more like a slope kind of something to not look like it's just a little yeah open up. Yeah. But it may not be seen. Looks like the top of a stairway to a roof. It does. It is more it is a more industrial kind of structure. I, mean, like where I lived across the street from this property and it was always fascinated by it. I mean, with this going into the one at the uh, Charlie Bar, this pool, it's a pretty nice property as well. That's other thing. Any other questions coming? Um, just, I, I assume you don't have any issue with removing the dormers on the front of 760, or not, the, sorry, the dormers, the shutters on the front of 762 Pearl. Their one's already fallen down. They look plastic. Is that? Mm -hmm. Don't look at They're not uh, very faux. So yeah. Get rid of them all. Okay, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll remove those and then, but what if they're 40 years old? Yeah, yeah. that's good. Um, and then the dormers, what are your thoughts on the dormers of that, uh, of, of, uh, 30 Columbus? Um, I know that was a big ask, I think, too, is that the long shed dormer. So I just. The roof material. The existing is shing asphalt shingling. Is the okay? So all the existing paving, you actually are putting some landscaping kind of buffer around. Yeah, yeah, kind of keep get some green space, but we will still keep six parking spaces, so it's fully parked. But um, so be a little condo associated. There. Yeah, pretty, um, yeah. Okay. I'll South dormers, like towards. Yeah. See page 13 of what the floor plans do and why yeah, it's driving. Yeah, I see that. I see pauses. Talk about 50% of the roof space, but we're below 50%. There's something about this roof is kind of hodgepodge as well. Okay. And then you get like that almost like storefront entrance. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Both intrusion wall. And we, we would open that that current door on there that's facing Pearl. Uh, it's there, but it's walled over on the inside. So we'll be opening that back yeah. up. Um, so that's sort of side entrance that's used now that you're seeing under the porch will be more of a side entrance, like pet back patio type, back porch type of thing, um, which is, I think, yeah, more appropriate, I would guess. So it comes in. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, more old business is the agenda. We owe you a vote. Uh, take it outside of this. Yeah, this one right now. Okay. All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. I move to adjourn. Second. Question on the motion? Can't object to it. <laughs> Anything to note? Oh, oh, oh. There was a uh, comeback. Crap. But they're not here. Um, oh, item 10 to GB 2380015. Continue. Continue. Right. So I went to the. Uh,